A new Israeli study appears to show a link to nitric oxide and autism. If true, this may introduce a potential future method of reducing the symptoms of autism. So we're going to take a look into what this study has to say. And so from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. Israel has done a lot of research and work on autism and how it affects children and their families. The country has become a major hub for studies on autism. Those with autism spectrum disorders, or ASD, have social and communication difficulties, which often makes it hard for autism sufferers to leave home and live independent lives. Now, Israel has also set up a national autism database as a resource to study autism risk factors, biomarkers, outcome measures, and treatment efficacy. The Middle Eastern country is continuously studying the disorder, and now they have released another study on a potential future method of reducing the symptoms of autism. So this study from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem showed a possible future method for reducing symptoms of autism. The peer-reviewed study was led by Dr. Amal and a team from the University School of Pharmacy. According to the researchers, they, quote, discovered elevated levels of nitric oxide, or NO, in an ASD, or autism spectrum disorder, mouse model. We suggest several mechanisms for the involvement of NO. S-nitroslation, and NO-mediated post-translational modification, or PTM, in ASD pathology. According to Dr. Amal, he said that our research showed in an extraordinary way that inhibiting the production of nitric oxide, specifically in brain neuron cells in mouse models of autism, causes a decrease in autism-like symptoms. By inhibiting the production of nitric oxide on laboratory animals, they became more social unless repetitiveness was observed in their behavior. Additionally, the animals showed interest in new objects and were less anxious. Finally, the decrease in nitric oxide levels led to a significant improvement in neuronal indices. In addition to the mouse models, research was also conducted on human stem cells and children with low-functioning autism. Now, according to the researchers, they say that there is a clear link between high levels of nitric oxide in the brain and autism, which, if true, could lead to the discovery of new medications to treat the developmental disorder. So what is nitric oxide exactly? Well, nitric oxide is a gas produced by cells throughout the body. It has a role in a variety of functions, which include regulating blood pressure, inflammation, and the immune system. But... High levels of nitric oxide can also be harmful, and previous research has connected it to several diseases, which include Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and schizophrenia. Now, the researchers found that reducing nitric oxide levels led to a significant improvement in neuronal indices, and according to the study, the dysregulation of nitric oxide is responsible for various neurodevelopmental, neuropsychiatric, and neurodegenerative disorders. However, the role of nitric oxide in ASD remains unknown. To prove the causal effect of nitric oxide in ASD pathology, we conducted multidisciplinary experiments using cellular and mouse models. IPSC derived cortical neurons from patients with Shank 3 mutations, as well as clinical plasma samples. Importantly, we found that elevated NO levels contribute to ASD-like defects whereas inhibiting its production via neuronal nitric oxide synthase led to its reversal. This study suggests a direct link between nitric oxide and autism spectrum disorder, which may lead to the discovery of novel therapeutic targets. Now, the study concluded by saying that this is a novel experimental study that establishes a direct link between nitric oxide and autism spectrum disorder, leading to the discovery of novel nitric oxide-related drug targets for the disorder and suggesting neuronal nitric oxide synthase as a precise target for treatment. Now, this is a fascinating study and one that we will certainly be keeping an eye on for future developments going forward. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. 
For more content like this, be sure to check back to this channel daily, Monday through Friday, or for written articles published every day, seven days a week, feel free to visit us at trialsitenews.com. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. From Trialsite News, I am Adrian, and I'll see you all next time.